Good morning, everyone. It's Saturday, May 1st. So welcome to our last Art Together program of the year, um, of the academic year, I should say. But we're so excited to have you joining us, especially for the last one. We're going to be making a really cool project today that's all about positive and negative space. So I would say we're in for a good time. We're going to look at some stuff from the museum, and then we're going to make our project together. So my name is Claire, and I'm the assistant curator of education at the Zimmerly Art Museum. And I have my friend Yasmin, who is our teaching artist. She's here with us today. And let me just show you a couple pictures from um, the collection that we have in the museum. And it'll give you a good idea of the types of project um, that we're gonna be making today and just get you thinking a little bit about positive and negative space. So I will share my screen. So what we're doing today is a project called Noten Designs, and that word comes from um, Japanese, and it's all about the relationship and the play between light and dark and positive and negative space. So you'll see what I mean as we look at a, at a few pictures. So our first picture here is an image of a woodcut. So it's a print on paper. So made with um, someone carves uh, into a piece of wood and then puts ink on top of the wood. And then it settles into, you know, the different crevices. And then you put a piece of paper on top. This is a very um, simple explanation of how a woodcut actually works. Um, but then when you take the paper off, you're left with the image on the piece of paper from what you've carved. So you can see here, there's a lot of black ink. And then there's also a good amount of white space where the ink did not take. So it helps you sort of get an idea of the light and dark relationship and how they work together and what you can imagine being positive space which is what you focus on, and negative space, which is sort of more, you know, in the background. Now, this image, this drawing is a very good example of sort of where we're going to go with our project today. So you can see that here we have, I believe it's supposed to be a doorway, but I like to think of it as a capital letter I. Um, but you have this shape here drawn in, the, in pencil, and then you have a negative space sort of outline of a man tipping his hat, like saying, bye, you know, see you later. Um, and then on the right side of the image, you have the reverse of that. So it's almost as if like they cut out these two side portions and the man out of, you know, the colored paper and then put it here to the side. So you're seeing the black and the white images. Kind of like, um, like sometimes there, you might have seen drawings of vases um, and you know, you'll focus on the vase which is in the center because it's usually dark, but then you know, on the outside it creates a different shape. So based on where your eyes are focusing, you know, what you see might change. Um, this is just another example that I thought would be fun to look at. It's not really what we're doing with our project, but the, the idea behind it um, might be helpful. So you can see here we have this prism of colors on a white background, and then you have the opposite on the right side. You have the same colors, um, but on a black background. So everything is, you know, reversed. So positive and negative, even if you think, um, I'm sure your grownups will remember if you developed film ever, you would get the printout of your picture, but you would also get a negative and everything on the negative was reversed. So that's a helpful way to sort of think about what we're gonna do with this project. And the same thing here with this painting. 
but this is where it gets fun. These are some examples of what you can do with the project that we're making today. So you can keep it really simple just with, you know, some squares and triangles, maybe some squiggles. Um, I know Yasmin's going to start off with a simple image um, with some simple shapes. But then when we work on our second one, or if you want to make more on your own, you can go crazy. You can get all the squiggles or curvy lines, angular lines, whatever kind of shapes you can think of. Um, you can really go nuts with this. There's a lot of possibilities. Um, so I'll stop sharing the screen. And yeah, if, if everyone's ready, if you've got your your colored paper or your two colors of paper rather, pencil, scissors, and a glue stick. I'll turn it over to Yasmin and we're good to go. So I Hi, can't everyone. wait to see what you guys make. Yay. Good morning. Happy Saturday, everyone. So we are focusing on Notan art. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And here are, I'm just going to show you guys some of what I, some of my examples that I did the other day. And then I'm gonna go over how I did them and we're gonna do some together if that's okay. This is another one. This is a different one. So Notan art is a Japanese term meaning light dark harmony. So what that means is, and I'll use this one as an example. So if you can see the purple in this is the dark color. And then obviously we have the white background and it's the light representation. So this is an example of a two value Notan art. They do have some that are more than two values, but for the purposes of today's lesson, we're just gonna stick to the two value, it's easier. It's a simple, simple version. And the two values, meaning the dark and the light, represent positive and negative space. So I have over here, I have, a white piece of paper and I have a black piece of paper. If you want to do something, we're going to probably start with something like this. If you want to do something like this, what I did is I actually got a full size piece of construction paper and I cut it in half for this piece. So if you have your second piece of construction paper and you want to get it to a smaller size, the easiest way is just to cut it in half. I folded it and then I just cut it right in half. I also have a glue stick, some scissors, and a pencil. The pencil is for some of the designs that I did. I liked to draw them out before I started cutting just to make sure that I was accomplishing what I wanted to accomplish today. So Without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to my workspace. So just give me one second and bear with me. Okay, can everyone hear me okay? I hope yep, so. Yep, you sound good. Perfect, thank you. So here is my piece of white paper and my black piece of paper. So I'm gonna start with it centered. Um, also, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to unmute yourself or type it in the chat and we will be more than happy to sort of explain anything or go over something if you have any questions. So. Um, I think we're going to start with some very basic designs and shapes just to get started. And I am going to draw them out on my dark piece of paper before I cut them out. I know it's a little hard to see on the black, but um, when you're doing this, I like to work from the edges outward because if you take a look at the example, you're going to almost flip what you cut out to sort of represent and flip that image. So yes, you can cut from the middle, but for the purposes of this uh, example, I'm going to work from the edges outward. So, and it doesn't have to be exact, as long as you know um, what you're trying to um, cut I out. Questions. 
I'm sorry. Yeah. What's your question? Okay. So I have white and orange paper. Will that work? Absolutely. Absolutely. So you're, we're doing two values. So any color will work. I, per, I just wanted for the purposes of this to use white and black, but you can use any two colors. Your white and orange absolutely will work. Okay. And also like what designs should we, like what type of design should we put on the middle paper? Okay. So I'm right now I'm doing geometric shapes. I know it's hard to see on, let me actually switch this here. I'm going to use blue. So it's easier for you to see what I'm doing, but um, any designs will work. So here you can see, I just did like a random squiggle. I did a butterfly. I did a dandelion up here. And over here, I just did leaves and things. It's, it's whatever you want. Um, but if you bear with me for a couple minutes, you're gonna see the designs that I'm gonna do on this piece of paper. They're gonna be very simple. And then, but you can get as creative as you'd like with yours. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, cool. Awesome. So just hang on for a couple minutes and I, I think you'll be able to see better with, um, ideally, I should have used a Sharpie. Hopefully this, you can kind of see, I'm just doing a triangle over here. I'm gonna try to do a square on this side, I'm trying to make the shapes really dark. So hopefully you can see it. And just so you have an idea, and then I'm actually gonna do a second project with, um, with another piece of paper. And that one will be a little more fun a little more complex, but this one, I just want everyone to sort of get just the basic um, idea of, of this. So I'm gonna start cutting and you're gonna see how this is going to, so see, I cut my first shape, it's a triangle. So this is what I would glue. I would flip it over so that it creates the positive and negative space. See like this, this is super simple, um, but it's um, just to show you how to get started and then you can make them more complex. So here's another one. I actually had a lot of fun with this project when I was working on some examples. So here, and I'm not gonna glue anything down yet, so I can still maneuver anything around. So this, as you can see, we're starting to build our project. So we have a square over here, we have a triangle over here. I'm gonna flip this around. And then in a couple minutes, I'm gonna show you how we can sort of make this a little more complex and a little more fun. Okay, so I flip this one over. Let's move it down a little bit. Cool. Now I'm gonna do a circle on this side. And if anyone needs help with um, their scissors, I'm sure there hopefully will be a grown up that can help you. I know for me, I'm sometimes struggle with the scissors. Okay, let's see. So now we're gonna flip this back over and then we're gonna put our shape here. So this is a very, very simplified version of no tan art. Now, if you're at this stage, but you wanna make what you've already done so far a little more complex, here is sort of an easy trick to do it. So let's start with our triangle. I'm gonna draw another triangle inside of my triangle. I know it's a little hard to see, but you're gonna get a better idea of that in just a second. And I'm gonna cut this smaller triangle out like this. And then I'm gonna flip it again. So you see now we're making it a little more complex. And obviously this is still 
we're just working with basic shapes, just triangles and squares and circles. And now we're gonna do the same thing with our square, like so. So here's my one square and here is my next square. And then obviously you can see I have a lot of this empty space in the middle. If you work on your next design and you want to work further into the that darker piece of paper, that's definitely an option as well. This was just a simplified version, so you could kind of get an idea of how to get started. I'm going to glue this down, and then we are going to get started on our next piece, which will be a little more abstract, a little more fun, um, a little more complex. So let's just glue this down first. So what I like to do before I glue is just to make sure that everything is exactly where I want it to be. So I'm just gonna adjust my paper a little bit. Let's see. Okay. And I'm actually gonna start with my biggest piece, which is this one. I'm gonna glue it down first. If you have a liquid glue instead of a glue stick, that should work as well. Um, the glue stick I found is just a little less messy for me. So that's what I chose. Oh, okay, let's see. And that should stick, cool. Now I'm just gonna glue down my smaller pieces just so we have an idea of what this would look like. Um, and again, like you can use any colored, two different color pieces of paper. I just happen to have white and blue. Um, but if you have yellow and green, that can work as well. Okay, and here is another little piece. There we go. So this is almost done and then we will get started on our next one. Does anyone have any questions so far? I hope, I hope I've made a very simplified version of no tan art somewhat understandable. Cool. And so this is a very simple version. For the next one, we're gonna attempt a little more complicated one. Um, for your own project, you do not have to do more than one, but you can do as simple or as complicated as you'd like. So I'm gonna move this over and I'm gonna get another piece of paper. So for this one, I wanna try something a little different. For this project, if you can, take a look at this. I actually didn't center my darker piece of paper. I did it on a, on a side, so it almost became a mirror image. That is also a version of no tan art. So we are actually gonna try that for this project, um, just to show you an alternative um, than the centered version. Um, and this one was actually really, really fun to do. So we're gonna give it a go. So I'm just gonna put it on one side and I'm gonna grab my pencil again and I'm gonna start drawing a design that I'm gonna cut out. Um, I'm gonna try something more abstract, more fun. Okay. I like to draw mine before I cut just so I, make sure I kind of have an idea of what I'm doing, but you are not obligated to do that. You can just sort of take it as it goes and just cut and see where the scissors take you. I had um, 
good friend of mine who considers it drawing with her scissors, which I think is a really cool way of looking at it. Okay, so I'm gonna start cutting this out. I know you, it's a little hard to see, but there's just a really cool squiggle. I'm gonna cut my squiggle out and we'll see how it looks. And as you're working on your projects, think about where you want to put um, that darker, smaller piece of paper. I know I've shown you guys two examples so far of one in the center and then one on the side, almost as a mirror image. But there are a lot of possibilities. So definitely think about that. So this is what we have so far but it's a little tough to see, but I actually drew a second squiggle. So we're gonna keep cutting this piece. So, let's see. If this were to go here, this piece would be going here. I was cutting this piece of paper in, in the middle. I hope now we can see where I was. So here is my one squiggle. I obviously cut more into it. And then I did these three little dots as well. And now I'm gonna work on this side. This side's a little plain. Um, and that's what we're gonna go on next. So. I think I'm gonna do a leaf pattern. I really enjoyed doing that in the one example I did. And it was really cool to sort of cut various designs into it. So I know it's a little tough to see, but once I cut it out, it'll be a little easier. I'm gonna leave these center pieces where they are just so that I don't upset sort of the, what I've already laid out. So I'm gonna to try to move this away to cut it. There we go. All right. Let's see. Okay. Now the cool thing about this mirror version, and I know it's a little tough to sort of think about, but so if this was the mirror over here, we're gonna actually put the leaf on the inverse area. So it would actually go on this side to fill this space here on the right. So I'm gonna keep cutting this other leaf out and then we are gonna add more to it. So just bear with me for a second. How's everyone doing with their Notan art? You can put a thumbs up or just type in the chat. Hopefully you're all doing well with it. There we go. So there's the other spot. We're gonna put this guy over here. Cool, now I wanna make this a little more fun, a little more complex. So I'm actually gonna draw more into it. So let me draw this one. Um, I'm gonna change my mind actually. So um, I'm gonna draw something else. Okay. So I'm gonna cut out more shapes in this leaf pattern. All right, cool. So now this bigger piece is gonna stay over here on the right as the mirror image of this side. And then this inner piece would go here. So this is sort of becoming symmetrical in like a mirror symmetry kind of way. So now I'm gonna cut this bigger piece. 
Let's try it out. Add it a little bit more. All right. So we're going to put this back for there, and then this guy would go over here. Um, let's see. Um, but I want to keep going on this piece. So I'm actually going to cut more into this piece. So. See. And this is the cool thing about Notan art. You can sort of keep going in your project. You can make it as complex as you want. Although one thing to think about while you're doing this is how tiny of a piece you're gonna cut to then glue back on. So just keep that in mind as you're cutting. And then this one goes over there. So see, we're sort of building that mirror image up even more into that positive and negative space. So you can see this white over here becomes a negative space, whereas the inverse of that is the positive space on the right side. So let's keep going over here. really tiny piece to cut out. So let's see. Let's see if it's going to work out right there and here. Cool. Awesome. Now we still have some areas where we can add a little bit more, namely right here. This is what I've been sort of looking at. Wanted to add something there. I'm trying to think of what cool shape I can add. I actually really like the triangle from our last project piece. So I'm gonna do a little triangle here. And I'm gonna cut that out. And I know this is tough, but I'm trying not to upset the things I've already laid out. There we go. So I'm just gonna cut this out. Perfect. I'm gonna try to put this back where it was. Let's see if I can do it. Cool. So you're really kind of getting a cool negative image on this side. And this would go right there. Cool. Let's It definitely is okay if you don't fill the whole paper, by the way. I'm just, I wanna keep working on this. So that's why I'm gonna keep filling my paper, but it's definitely okay if you don't. So here's my triangle and here is my other triangle. So now we kind of get to what I think is a little bit of the tricky part, gluing all of this down. So I'm gonna try to be very careful when I do it, but it's, it's okay if something gets glued in an awkward spot. So I'm gonna try to put glue on this piece first. I like to start with the bigger piece just because I think it gets something out of the way and then I can maneuver the smaller pieces around it. But you can definitely start with some of your smaller pieces, so. This has glue on it, so let's try to put it where it's gonna go. Let's see. Okay. So see, it kind of just landed a little wrong on my paper, so I'm gonna try to adjust it. There we go. And this piece is the one that got a little crooked. Let's try. Here we go. Cool. So I moved a couple things around in my 
while I was trying to glue, but that's okay. So let's see. Awesome. And if anyone is kind of looking for something to be a little more challenging, um, no tan art, like I mentioned earlier, this is the two value version. So it only has two colors. You can attempt this with more colors. That would be a really cool challenge if you are interested. A little tricky though, I think, but definitely can be done. Right, let's see if I can glue this down. Right there, cool. And let's try our triangle next. Okay. Awesome. So our piece is really starting to come together. And I'm gonna try to glue this piece next. Okay, let's see. Okay. I'm trying to be super careful to make sure that the piece that I'm laying down with glue is gonna line up with the mirror image on the other side. So that's why I'm trying to be a little more careful with my pieces. I'm gonna try this one next. Okay. All right. Let's see. Awesome. Okay, and I'll do this one next. Does anyone have any questions so far? Is everyone just toiling away at their project? All right, let's see if we can just lay this down. Claire, is anyone in the chat asking any questions? Nope, I think everyone is pretty set on, you know, their plans. Awesome. Which makes me really excited. Same, I'm on, um, my setup is my iPad, so I cannot see the chat currently. So that's why I asked. Oh, that's okay. I'm here. Cool. Thank you. I appreciate yep. it. Okay. So I'm still, oh, that one wasn't glued down. <laughs> so I'm still gluing this down. I know this is more of a tedious part of our project, but um, I feel like those are the two main components of this project, actually, the cutting and the gluing. So this just feels a little um, more tedious because it's less creative, but it's just sort of solidifying our creative process onto the paper. So bear with me while I glue all of this down. Um, I'm excited to see what all of you have created later. I want to see what colors you used, what cool designs you came up with. I tried to simplify it just so you guys could get sort of the idea in a more straightforward way. So, but there's definitely a lot of ways to be creative with this. Um, when I was doing my research on this, I found 
some Notan art examples that were very, very involved. It was a whole scene sort of cut out. Um, one of the ones that stuck out to me was it was, I think it was a it was a man and he was walking through almost like a garden. And it was it was a two value Notan art. So it was just two colors. And it was this whole scene cut out very detailed. Um, and I almost wish when you looked at that stuff, you could sort of ask like how long it took that person because I imagine it took a very, very long time to cut all that out. But for the sake of this project, I tried to do something that was more simple and more time friendly. I think from my guess, I would imagine that something that complex like the one I saw online took a very long time. And I know we have somewhat of a limited amount of time together. So as you can see, I just have one more piece that I'm gonna glue down and then this one will be finished. And if you're interested in looking at that, um, definitely see if your grown up can Google um, more Notan art images and you can probably find the one I'm talking about with um, the older man walking through the garden. So I'm gonna also make sure there are no little spots that are coming up. So I'm gonna put a little more glue here just to make sure that everything's in its place. And Yasmin, we just had a question in the chat about oh. why this method is called Notan. So, so yeah, go ahead. So Notan is a Japanese term meaning light and dark harmony. So it's just this concept of, um, of art where you're talking about this would be like, I guess, the darker side and the lighter side, and you're building up. Actually, when I was doing my research on this, artists use this sort of practice as a way to build up value in their paintings. So for example, let's say I'm doing a painting of, let's talk about the older man in the garden, right? I would do a version of Notan art, this two value system, to sort of help me visualize the values in my painting. Um, and that's just one way to sort of think about it. You don't, that's not necessarily always the case. You, some artists do this just for the visual like aspect of it. But one thing that I found was that some artists do use this to sort of think about how they're gonna put dark and light in their painting that they're gonna do later on. Does that answer your question? I think that's definitely a good explanation. So thank awesome. you. Of course, of course. And I mean, that's the cool thing about, I think this, this project is there are so many different ways to both think about it and to sort of keep building on it. Um, I personally was very surprised. Um, I, I paint and I have never used this to sort of build value, but when I stop to think about it, it makes a lot of sense because when you're working on a piece, you one of the things that you definitely want to think about is how to sort of build that value of this, this is a darker side of a painting, this is a lighter side of a painting. And this is just a very simplified way of processing that information before you commit to an entire painting, which is obviously much more involved and more time consuming. So this is almost like a prequel, but it doesn't have to be. I think this was just fun as it was. I actually really enjoyed working on this. Um, I thought it was very just fun to, to think about how we're gonna sort of mirror these images together. Mm -hmm.